So yeah, we are we are here with Sykes today um, for another Discovery interview. First of all, make sure you you hit subscribe on our channel and go and check out Sykes. Um, I'm really excited about today's interview. So in in my opinion, we're here with one of the most exciting artists to come out of 2020, a turbulent year for many. Um, first of all, Sykes, I just wanted to understand from your perspective how your year's been within this pandemic stricken 12 months. Um. Yeah, I think the one way to describe it, it's just unexpected, mm-hmm. really. Um, I didn't go into this year thinking, for starters, I'm going to make a COVID song. I don't think anyone expected COVID yeah, yeah. to, you know, come across the way it did. Um, because really and truly, I went into this year with my manager thinking, like with the plan of just like, it's just going to be a development, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of releases here and there, not having to push as, mm-hmm. as hard, but still working hard behind the scenes to just make me a better artist. But then um, obviously spreading dropped and then all of that kind of goes out the window because it's like, oh, now you're, now you're there. So yeah, you yeah. kind of have to, there's there's still time for development, but it's, un, it's, a, it's a pressure thing now because it's like you have... It's uh, almost a, a platform a, for you to, yeah, to build like, on. Yeah, and, and, and a level that you now have to exceed. Maintain. And, and, yeah. yeah, maintain. That's the main thing. And and, and live up to um, within your artistry. So, um, yeah, unexpected. It definitely changed that. The, the plans, it wasn't planned. It, mm-hmm. it definitely, nothing's happened this year. Was I don't think was w- w- what we expected to happen mm-hmm, to begin mm-hmm. with. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of beat me to it, to be honest. Obviously, it's hard to do an interview at the moment without speaking about the, the influence of coronavirus for obvious reasons. And spreading obviously gave you, as you said, a platform, a platform that you had to maintain, but definitely changed your plans. Mm-hmm. From my perspective, from an outside perspective, one of the most impressive things about spreading is the fact that you've gained so much traction all from your own channel. Um, so yeah, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's at 1.4 million views as we speak today. How, I guess, happy and how humbled are you by the fact that you've got such a, a massive amount of traction through your own channel, most importantly? Um, I think it's a big achievement. Um, and it's like, I'm never really focused on numbers and this, that and the other. Mm-hmm. Even when we did hit it, I don't really, I didn't take it in in the moment. It's just like, okay, like I, I was just watching the numbers, like how's it going to feel <laughs> when it does? And you don't really take it in, in the moment. Mm-hmm. But then it's when you have time to just sit down and just look back over everything you've done. And it's like, wow, I've done, I've just done that. You know what I mean? That's that's when you take it in um, really and truly to look back and see 1.4. Because it's like, it gets to one mil. Or when it, when it hits, whatever it hits, it's like, all right, cool, it's going to stay there mm-hmm. now. That's that's the end of its run. Then it gets to the next thing. Then it gets to the next, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. And then it hit a mil. I was like, okay, so now it's done. And then it's a 1.4, and it's just, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. cool. So I don't know, to me, it's just, um, it's a very humbling experience to do that so early on in to, I don't know, my career, I would say, mm-hmm. um, since I've started, I guess, yeah, I've been doing music for quite a long time, but in terms of like how, how taking long would you it, say? I've been doing music like since I've been eight. Oh, really? Yeah, like just listening to artists and just trying to write my own raps. It's like it's more of like a a childish thing back then. Like just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then when I went into secondary schools, when I started taking it more seriously, started listening to more artists, started studying it. I've always had a love for it, and then it just started coming natural to me. And then from there, I just started putting freestyles out and just building different opportunities came along mm-hmm. and then um, I think the first major thing I was a part of was um, the Black Box Cypher yeah, yeah. which I did at 17 um, years of age and then yeah since then from then I've just been building and building and building and then um, came into contact with my manager and then from there we've just been building as well and then mm-hmm. spreading happened and then um, yeah yeah well, whilst on on the topic of spreading, and another thing that that I thought about when I when I was listening to it when it first came out, and when I listened to it yesterday in preparation for today, is that you weren't the only person, understandably, that tried to capitalise on the coronavirus situation. So, I guess with that in mind, 
what what do you think makes spreading stand out from i guess competition you could call it i would say it was definitely the culture that pushed it forward in terms of like the genre i decided to use Mm -hmm. um which was drill slash trap uh, a draw trap sound um and then the push it got from the media Mm -hmm. as well and um yeah and then i think it just got it just got pushed into the algorithm into youtube and then the more people see it the more people clicked on it the more people are listening to it i think what definitely made it stand out was the timing and the media outlets as well that were pushing it forward um that's one thing that i was that was a new experience for me as well mm-hmm. the attention from media outlets um I didn't, I didn't expect that, to be honest. I just thought, cool, I'm going to make this. I'm happy with it. I'm going to pull it out. And then, yeah, whatever happens, happens after yeah, that. Yeah. You, you said you were new to all the attention. How, how did you cope with that? Um, it did get long at times, really and truly. <laughs> it got very, and it's funny because it's like, you, obviously, okay, cool. Like, as when you're an insert and, and you're an artist, it's like, okay, cool, I can't wait till I hit 10K or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're still doing the music thing, but it's like, oh, it would be nice to have this amount of followers. And once you get, as I didn't really get to capture it, if that makes sure, sense, because sure. it just kept building. You just kept receiving messages. and A fast process is what yeah. you didn't get to. Yeah. And even now, I don't really take it in because I'm just still working. So it's mm-hmm. like, you wait for something to happen. And when you get there, it's just not the same, yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess. So, um, but yeah, it was definitely a new experience. Um, I think it's 50-50 because as well as it helped me cope during lockdown and that, um, in terms of like putting me out of boredom and Mm -hmm. having interaction there, it was very long to deal with at the same time. Um, A lot of messages. Sure. Sometimes you just want to be left alone. At the end of the day, I'm still human. So it's it's just, I still go through natural emotions and this, that and the other. So I'm still me. So it was 50-50, I Mm -hmm. guess. But, um, with that in mind I'm just kind of thinking out loud actually if you maybe not struggled is the right word but that was a, a new experience to you and you said you're still human sometimes you just want to have a time a time alone mm-hmm. how does that make you feel about when I'm going to use the word when instead of if when you make it to the very top how will you feel about the mass of, of people that are getting in contact with you that's going to be 100 times what you experienced over the spreading period I think um you know, by the time we get there, it would have been something that we know how to work around. Probably would have had a bigger team by then mm-hmm. that could deal with that. That makes it easier. Because one thing, um, it's, it's not. It's just me and my manager at the moment. Um, so most of the stuff we do is just us. So when it came to my socials, he yeah he helped out, but then I have to handle it as well. Mm-hmm. And there was a look like. Um, so yeah, I feel like I don't know because as we progress and as we release more songs and as we grow, it will be something that we know how to mm-hmm. tackle better. Mm-hmm. Especially given the conditions as well, for me to like blow up in lockdown, mm-hmm. it was it's weird because it's yeah, like yeah. all of this is happening, but I'm I'm locked in my house. Mm-hmm. I'm not going out there, getting on with my daily life, and like, I'm just this is the only thing that my mind is on, just focused on. It's just spreading music social media just popping off and that was it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So by then I think it would be, by the time it happens, hopefully COVID's done and yeah, we'll know how to tackle it better anyway. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I just thought that'd be interesting because ultimately if it was one of those things that stood out for you over that period of where spreading was blowing up, it's something obviously to bear in mind moving forward as you grow as an artist. Um, so, I mean, to, to very quickly stay on the topic of spreading and we've quoted the views, so 1.4 million views and your latest release, solo release, your latest solo release action is at 17,000 views, both posted on your own channel. So I wanted to understand from your perspective as although me as a fan, as a listener, I can see the progression from spreading in terms of the art, in terms of the lyricism to action. How does it feel having 1.4 million views on a track you produced three, four months into the year and then your latest release, as you feel you've been growing throughout the year and perfecting your craft, has much less views. How does that feel? So for me, it's not about the numbers anyway. Mm-hmm. I always believe that the numbers will come 
when the time is right, mm-hmm. regardless. And it's not something that I look at and I'm like, ah, oh, well, this should be on this, this should be on this. And at the end of the day, I believe in my talent. Everyone I'm working with around me believes in my talent. And mm-hmm. you know, when the time comes for me to be taken in, I'll get taken in. Um, and yeah, the numbers might have dropped, but if I went into this year wanting to grow as an artist and develop anyway, then that's something that we've definitely 100% have achieved. Mm-hmm. So even if one aspect, because that's the way it looks to everyone on the outside view. Of course. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, you drop spreading. That's got this amount of views. And then he's dropped action and guillotine and they're mm-hmm. on less mm-hmm. views, but it's like they don't understand the work that's being put in sure. to even develop to that stage mm-hmm. anyway. So it's like, I'm satisfied mm-hmm. um, with, it's not something that I really take in. I'm satisfied with how everything is at the moment. Um, I'm working as hard as I can. Um, and the only thing I can do is get better, really and truly. So, because if, if I was thinking of it the way everyone looks at it, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. This has less numbers. Spreading's got this amount. I'd probably get lazy and not make as good music because I'm thinking, oh, no one's taking me anyway. It's no point. But it's like, you never know which song is going to be the one that pops off anyway. So you always have to have that integrity to put out the best work um, at all times. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, an artist that I reference a lot in interviews is Russ, obviously from the US. So you'll probably be well aware, obviously he dropped one track a week for God knows how long and nothing happened for say a year, two years. And then all of a sudden everything started to blow up. And mm-hmm. three years later, he released his album. And I'm pretty certain three of the tracks that he released in that one track a week period went platinum. So it's a case of, he he quotes and he says, trust the what, fuck the when. So it's about trusting the craft that you do and the when will the when will happen when it's supposed to happen. Hundred so percent. I think that's that's interesting. It's one thing that I just wanted to understand because like I mentioned when I was asking you the question, I can clearly see the the artistic progression from the tracks, but some people say numbers don't lie, da 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 da. But it's interesting to understand your your perspective. Um yeah, I mean to to stay on the topic of numbers actually. So I was going through your Instagram in preparation for today and something which is incredibly impressive i'm not sure if i've seen a bigger progression from 2019 to 2020 is your spotify artist profile so i mean i'm just going to reel them off so in 2019 it's 5.4k streams 269 hours listened and 1.6k listeners 2020 1.2 million streams 47.7k hours listened and 121.6k listeners um, yeah, so from my perspective, that's outrageous. Um, but but how do you feel about those numbers? Um, I'm definitely happy about them, 100%. Um, definitely humbled, but at the same time, I feel like I deserve it mm. because of how hard I've worked to get to that position. Because um, even the way I came about putting 4am out, mm. at the time, I couldn't even get the lease for the yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, um, so to even put that out, the way everything came across with me even putting that out to, for it to do what it did, and then for me to progress from that to drop in one of the anthems of the year, I would mm-hmm. say 100. that's, I don't know, yeah, it's well-deserved by me, I guess, because I put the work in for um for that to happen. And, um yeah, I just feel like it's, it's weird to look at, really and truly, because it's like it was too... It's, two very different stages I was at at that point in my life um, when 4am did drop and when the wrapped up came around anyway and it's like you're looking at that and it's like okay cool we go again next year like literally that's I, mm-hmm. I never lost faith I, I was like this is exciting mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean mm-hmm. I'm getting stats from um, Spotify and for artists I'm looking at them like right this is actually cold like I want these numbers to increase um next year definitely and not even for bragging rights but just because it means my numbers my music is going out to um yeah more it, it is proof isn't it that you mentioned ultimately you deserve it because of the hard work but it puts the hard work into perspective when you see those numbers 100 mm-hmm, percent, especially when you have the comparison as well from the previous year. um so yeah 100 yeah i'm just glad that the more like people my music touches and the more places it goes to 
the happier I am really and truly mm-hmm. and the more positive feedback I get, the happier I am as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So 1.2 million streams 2020. What's the goal 2021? Double it. Double it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100%. Just to... Just aim high as high as we can. No worries. I'll uh, I'll make sure I I tag you in this next year. And, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it went. Hundred uh, percent. Um, but yeah, I mean to, to kind of finish off on the topic of twenty twenty. What what would you say is your highlight of the year? Um, I think it's the progression. It's not even yeah. really and truly. It's not spreading. I feel like if anything, spreading is where it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me to then develop into everything else, because with me, it's like. As humble as I am, when it comes to music, I'm I'm very eager. Mm-hmm. I have a very eager ego. And it's like, the more, yeah, spreading what's doing its thing. But because I'm not really focused on the numbers and that, it's more for me, it's just like, what the quality of what I'm putting out. I was like, Definitely. I'm here writing. It's like, I know I've got songs better than spreading. I know I've got stuff. I've got bars. I've got things there better than spreading. I'm eager to put things out now because for everyone to see a different side of me. Mm-hmm. That was, um, and I think sort of highlight for me of this year was the development from it going from the HB Street Styles, Mm -hmm. so shout out Joey, um, to spreading, to to guillotine, Mm -hmm. to action, to the one mic. Mm -hmm. That was Mm -hmm. exciting for me. It's mainly the journey, like from spreading onwards to everyone. Even if those things are getting less numbers than spreading, whoever's taking it in can see, Mm. okay, cool. I'm not just, the guy sure. that raps about yeah, COVID, yeah, yeah, that yeah. I've got my thing patterned, you know what I mean? And that's how it's going to continue to be, hopefully, as time progresses. You kind of, to be honest, opened up the next question that, that I was going to go into, listing off all the bits of music that you've released this year. So a couple of things that I wanted to pick up on your releases from this year is the vast majority of them are freestyles, so I'll kind of come on to that shortly. But one thing that you mentioned that was quite interesting was being eager to, to get music out, to show that progression to the listeners. Mm-hmm. How hard is it to, I guess, tame that eager nature that you have and mix it with strategy from your manager to bring out pe- things at the right time? It's about having a balance because mm. that's literally that, um, that eagerness and then at the same time having to think as a strategist. It's like, that's literally what we're all about because yeah. it's like... Um, yeah, we have tunes there that are way better than action, way better than guillotine or whatever. But you have to think long term because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, cool. We can give the best tune to them now, but what is it going to actually Achieve. do? You want it to be taken in. So it's like, and that's not to say, oh, I'm going to put out the dead ones first because none of nothing we make is bad at all. But it's just a matter of showing that progression. So I'd rather release what I made before I got better, knowing that it still sounds good at the same time mm-hmm. and put that out and just continue like that and until the time's right to start giving them the proper um, content. From yeah, us, yeah. Really so, I mean, it's almost about telling a story, isn't it? And 100%. as each page turns, you, you get better. But even if you've got that, I guess, bump of finish that you're saying that you have in the catalogue, it's about waiting until the time's right to... Uh, to release that. Um, yeah, so I mentioned that, that out of your catalogue from this year, out of the, the content that you've released, that the vast majority of pieces have been freestyles. Mm. What What's the plan for an EP, a mixtape? Um, definitely a mixtape in the works um, for 2021, 100%. Can I quote you on that date? Huh? Can I quote you on that date? Um, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. It's definitely coming. It's definitely um um I'm excited for that, really and truly. I'm excited. Because I know it's just gonna it's once again, I'm always just excited for everyone to hear the like the development side mm-hmm. of things, really and truly. Um and having done everything we've done in twenty twenty, there's stuff for everyone to look back on mm-hmm. when we're at that point in the future when everyone's listening to the mixtape and then, then they get to go back and be like, oh, he made spreading. He also has guillotine. He has mm-hmm. action. The one mic, this, that, whatever it may be. So that's what I'm excited for. I mean, really and truly, it's just building upon that journey. Yeah, definitely. What what can fans, listeners expect from the mixtape? Um, <laughs> um, just, I don't know. They're going to enjoy it 
I just know they're going to enjoy it. It's going to be a mixture of different styles, 100%. Um, just to take in. Yeah, yeah. Just content, really and truly, until that time comes to drop, you know, proper big projects in the future. But I'm excited because it will be the first sort of project I've ever put out. It yeah. will be the first project yeah, yeah. I've ever put out, um, really and truly. So um, I'm excited to see what the responses will be. Um, but yeah, I'm confident that it will do well. Good. Good, good stuff. Well, I look forward to it. Um, I had to quiz you on that. But um, I mean, a question that, that I wanted to, I guess, understand the answer to, and this is more of a personal question about you rather than as an artist. Um, so I mentioned off camera that obviously we sat down last week with Graf, the winner of the Rap Game UK. And it's a question that I asked him and I had a really insightful answer from. So I wanted to pose the same question to you. So in, in terms of success, when you're, let's say, 30, 40 years old, what what does success look like to to you? It's being in a, a good enough position where, for starters, I'm happy with what everything I've achieved. That's the first thing: happiness um, with how hard I've worked, and I can look back on everything with pride, knowing that you know that's what I did, um, and just being able to to provide for everyone around me as well, knowing mm-hmm. that everyone's accounted for as a result of my hard work, mm-hmm. um, whether that comes in music or anything else, because that success doesn't just have to be from music directly. For sure. me, it's just making sure I'm happy, everyone else around me is happy, accounted for, blessed, and um, healthy, mate, really and truly, and knowing that we're living a comfortable, comfortable life, whatever that may be in the future, and that's what success looks like for me. So, yeah, I mean, w- one thing that you mentioned which which stuck out to me in your last answer was the the massive expression of that happiness is one of the most important things to you. And if you visualised what a successful life would look like to you, one of the most important things or the most important thing would be that happiness that you mentioned. 100%. If I'm thinking about your content and specifically the black box under 18 cipher, you express mental health issues and mental health problems in that. And also, I believe in your street styles as well is one of the things that you mentioned. So I wanted to understand, I guess, what influence you have to put that music out there and how much motivation it gives you to have that platform to express. I feel like... I never thought I was the sort of person who would, like, I don't know, have that um, intrinsic motivation to do what I do until I look back on everything I've made and everything I've released and I'm like, nah... I am intrinsically motivated in terms of, because it's like, when you start rapping about the mental health thing, because I've been doing it from, it's just my, it's just my reality mm. and my experiences. Um, and this is where I draw from mm. when I write, um, unless it's not about that. And it's like growing up in school, there's a lot of people who will take the piss out of that. And a lot of people will be like, ah, oh, you only rap about sad stuff. You know, you only, it's never happy, it's, uh, it's too depressing or da 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 But at the end of the day, that's my reality. But when it's like, when you're in that environment, there's a lot of peer pressure you feel to switch up and change from it. But I never wanted to switch up and change from what I was rapping about because at the end of the day, that's my truth. Um, so no matter what anyone else is saying, at that point in time, it's for me. I'm writing for me. If you like it, then you like it. If you don't, you don't. I'm not a mainstream artist. I don't need to, mm-hmm. at that point in time anyway, I don't need to entertain everyone. It's for me. And then, so from there, I just carried on. I had inspiration such as NF, who is a rapper I listen to, and he talks a lot about mental health. And the way he portrays it and the way he's so confident to put it out there also gave me confidence to get as dark as I can Mm. when I need to be, no matter what it is, and to also just spit the realness at the same time um, through my music. And then that I've always just carried these those little habits throughout... um, just writing in general, whether it's freestyles on the gram and then to the black box stuff or to the street styles. Yeah, yeah. And I look back on that and I'm like, okay, well, that's the influence that, I, that is just because that's just what I've been through. That's yeah. what I write from. How um, hard is it to, to put that vulnerability out there though into a song for everyone to see? At first, it's, it's definitely hard because it's like, okay, cool. Your parents are going to listen back to that for starters. People you know are going to listen back to that. But at the same time, I think about the impact it has on others. 
Well, this is it. One one thing that you said, and sorry to butt in there, but you said that when you're at school, a lot of people would would take the piss out of the the narrative that you were going for mm-hmm. with that that style of music and saying that you're always rapping about sad stuff, etc. But if you're rapping about this sad stuff, then the audience that you're appealing to, you're elevating them up and you're making them more happy. So ultimately, it's it's a case of that. Although the topic might be might be sad, mm. it's about elevating people out of that place. One hundred percent, and it's like um, for me, it's a thing where cool. Like, I don't really care about being judged mm. if I'm talking my truth. Mm. You feel me? And yeah, okay, cool. There's certain things you you can't say, but in terms of my mental health and everything, that's something that I'll continue to express about myself wherever given the opportunity to mm. whenever I'm given the opportunity to do so. And it's like if one person can message me and be like, I was going through some dark times, I was listening to 4 a.m. You really helped me. Oh bro, I listen to your music. It really helps me when I'm feeling low. Mm. Even when it's not about the mental health stuff, then I'm doing something right. That's how I see it as. Yeah, yeah. Um and for me, as well as not, I know I'm doing something right because when I listen to other artists, the artists I would be um, a fan of and I would listen to their music and when they describe mental health, for example, I brought NF, he made me feel like I could get through whatever I was yeah, going yeah. through as well. Um, so, so it's almost that, the feeling that you're giving the feeling that yeah, you're receiving from that, someone yeah, else to other yeah, people. Yeah, knowing that I'm doing that as well, I know I'm doing something right because there's a science behind it, mm-hmm. surely. If I feel like this because I'm listening to him and he's rapping about that and I'm also rapping about that and someone else is coming to me saying, you're making me feel like this, keep doing what you're doing, then I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's all that matters really and truly. If you're not going to take it in and it doesn't help you, then fair enough. I can't force it. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to be like, all right, cool, whatever. But if it does help you, then it helps you. That's really like, that's, that's what music should be about. You know, if you like it, you like it. If not then you don't really and truly. But yeah. No, thank you for that. It's a really good explanation. I just, yeah, I wanted to understand that. I was obviously going through all your content throughout the year and it's one of the biggest things that I picked up upon and there's not many artists out there of any age, let alone your age, that are, that are comfortable being that vulnerable within their tracks. So I think that's, that's admirable, if anything. So, but yeah, thank you for, for the answer. Um, so as I mentioned, I kind of want to go on to talk about motivation, your faith in your craft and, and also the planning behind it. I'm a firm believer that ultimately if you work hard enough at something, if you have faith in what you're doing and, and you plan it right, then you're going to be successful in that, whatever it is. 100%. So I, I wanted to firstly kind of understand where your motivation's drawn from, where that's family, different artists that you've expressed, um, and then and then kind of move on from there. My motivation just comes from a place of just, I don't know, wanting to do um, better for myself. Because the inspiration was just obviously whatever I was going through, whatever I wanted to write about. The motivation is definitely just because I want to prove I can be something the fact that I'd love music it's um within itself is my motivation as well. The fact that, you know, my parents take pride in what I do, that mm. is also a motivation mm. because they play a big part in my life. Um so having them behind what I do is a big motivation because it's like, okay, cool, we're on the same page. Mm. We can discuss certain things that I might not have been able to discuss with you before if you weren't on the same page with me in terms of music that's that's a very like my family's a very big motivation towards that um everyone who gets behind me mm. is motivation um and just knowing that i'm making people the people who care we proud kind of discuss that, through, yeah, yeah that's that's motivation to me and the people who feel my music and it helps them that is also motivation mm, to me mm. so that yeah it can't it's definitely something i don't think can be defined sure because it just ranges from different aspects yeah it's not just one thing it's like um obviously i'm not going to judge whatever someone else's motivations may be but it's not as fast forward as um uh money or a big car whatever that is if that's your motivation it's your motivation Mm, no mm, one can mm. judge you on that but mine is from just a range of different places but yeah 
Yeah, so just to just to really wrap things up, um, thank you for all the in-depth answers that you've given to, to the questions. I think it's going to be insightful for everyone, but I finally just wanted to understand and for you to tell the viewers, what, what do you think of Discovery? I know that we've written an article about you and you know a little bit about our mission, so I'd be, be really keen to hear your thoughts on, on our platform. Um, I think what you're doing is very, is very good. It's helpful to um, a lot of upcoming artists um, because... I just feel like even if the interviews and everything you're doing is not taken in in the moment, what that does is in the future when everyone's doing their thing is definitely one of those things that, oh, people are going to be like, oh, you done this back in the day. Let me watch it or whatever it may be. So it, it definitely helps a lot. It helps put things in your catalogue for people to go and watch. And even this is an opportunity in itself because the more interviews I do, the more people get to know more about me aside from music mm -hmm. and understand how I think, what my mentality is, my views and thoughts on things. I think that's also important as an artist. So people don't think you think of you in a one dimensional way. Like he's just a rapper. He's just, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it just gives you that chance to express yourself outside of expressing yourself in um, music. So I think what you're doing is, is very good and I hope it takes off. Calm. Appreciate it, bro. Well, thank you for your time. It's calm, bro. Nice one.